Okay, so this show starts with Sheree is having like brunch at her house. That same chef came and made brunch so she could have the ladies over. Basically, to talk about what happened at that um Harlem Nights, you know, party where Kenya and Martel kind of got into it. So what happens is, you know, she has a few ladies there with her. Who did she have? She had Marlo and she had Sanya and Courtney was there, I think. I don't know who was there. I didn't put that in my notes. But <laughs> she um they talk about BravoCon first, right? Mm-hmm. So they mentioned Mama Joyce and how it was very shady that Mama Joyce basically they said say something nice about Ty. She said he's still short. And then she was talking about how Todd, you know, ain't got no job. <laughs> so she was just being shady. And Marlo said something in her confessional, like, Candy need to stop worrying about me and worry about the streets, the streets being her mama. <laughs> so um, what did you think about just the whole Mama Joyce at BravoCon, you know, Shay and Candy's husband still, like, years later, she is still shading this man. What did you think about that? I feel like I'm going to need respectfully. I'm not even going to go on Mama Joyce. I need Candy to do some appropriate boundaries mm-hmm. with her mother. Um, we've been talking about Todd being broke for a good 10 years now. Right. And if we want to be transparent, you know, no, Todd didn't have Candy's money, right? Mm-hmm. But Todd has definitely added some value to, to Candy's brand. Yeah. Um, they seem to have a really good um, business relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have two kids together now. So you're you're talking about your grandkids' father. Yeah. I want Candy to put some appropriate boundaries on her mama. And I know that's difficult, but it needs to be, you're going to mess around and end up in a divorce line because I ain't going to hold you. I'm not sure if I could take somebody mama disrespecting me for 10 years. Right. I I, I don't know how long I could be able to, to take I that would, on national TV and all of that. Like, I don't know how long I could be able to take that. Not only, okay, I guess for me, because I have, if, you, if y'all go back in my video, the archives, I can go back years when she kind of first met Ty, back when I was reviewing Housewives of Atlanta consistently. And even when they had the wedding, you know, special, I was reviewing that. Mm-hmm. And I was disgusted with the way Mama Joyce was behaving and not only talking about Todd, but his mother. Remember when she called his mama a hoe and his daddy a pimp? Yeah. Like, and didn't know these people, but she just saying it. And then she wasn't very apologetic. So when his mom died, she was kind of like, oh, you know, yeah, that's sad your mama died. But it still was like no real remorse. But how about this? this? You remember when she was using candy credit cards under her name? Uh huh. She been needing some boundaries. She Uh needs to put her in some boundaries box. I don't think candy can. I don't know why. Because it's her mama. It's her mama. She love her mama. She don't know how to do it. It's and candy's a people pleaser. I get that, but this is your husband and. For me, like I am, I love both my parents. Girl, my parents are have been there for me, <laughs> you know, like in ways that other people might not have their parents be for them. Like I am blessed to have the parents I have, and I don't take advantage of it. I am very appreciative, but and still, there has to be boundaries and respect because I am an adult. And the choices I make, if I decide to get married and have a husband and a father of my kids, you don't get to come in and bring a turmoil because you're my mother or because you're my father. You got to respect boundaries. I remember having to create boundaries with my dad. I'm a daddy's girl. Like I told y'all Wednesday, mm-hmm. straight up daddy's girl, but have to check dad, you know, on my man respected or yeah. you won't come around no more. Like I, I'm going to really like ban you <laughs> and I love you like to pieces, but you're not going to bring this into my house. That's that's not okay. So, and then the fact that Kayla sent it, Kayla sent it to Ty. Like, yes. so the kids are seeing what Joyce is saying. I can't imagine Kayla, like, so this also lets me know Mama Joyce has not built a relationship with Kayla as Candy's stepdaughter. You couldn't have possibly because yes. Kayla was a, what was they like, preteens when Candy and Ty? 15, 16 when they got married. Yeah, so she got she into really knew what her. was going on. And then you talked about her grandma. But so I know, know you don't have a good relationship. About Kayla. She was like, I don't care about that girl. I remember she like disrespected his daughter too. So I'm sure Kayla probably has always 
had feelings, ill feelings towards Mama Joyce because of the, the mess that she caused and Candy never checks it, like never. So later on the episode, they go over this again. So I'm gonna just go ahead and move on <laughs> to the next part. Um, Sanya talks about her and her, was it Sonya? Sonya? I don't know how to say her name. I'm going to figure it out by Sunday. Sanya. Metals. I keep calling her Metals. <laughs> she uh, she talked about how she thought her and Drew were getting to a better place because Drew had texted her. But at BravoCon, you know, Drew was, you know, shady. Like, I think he was trying to get something out of me and do a lot of hands. So they talked about that, how now they ain't cool no more. And then Marlo goes into her nephews and how, you know, she, she's basically trying to show us <laughs> that she love them boys and don't hate her because last season, you know, she kicked them out. So now she's trying to show that she's like a effective, you know, aunt, auntie, momty, is that momty, aunt, whatever. So she's taking care of her nephews and getting them Christmas gifts and they got tutors and she got the life code. So she was updating that. She's really trying to get sympathy from us because people dragged her last season. So that's where that was. Um, did you care about any of those things besides the Mama Joyce thing? Because that's the only thing that's, you know. <laughs> I need medals to, to stop with this trivial beef with, with Drew. We don't care about it. It's dumb on both sides. Yeah. Like, I do feel like Sonya is already a flip-flopper. She mm -hmm. don't really stand on what she says. So I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I want to know why all them people living in your house. <laughs> That's what I want to know. I want to know why Sonya has a codependent. Is you scared to raise your son by yourself because your, your man is on the road? Like, what is it? Because why are all these grown people living in your house and it's not uncomfortable for you? I want that story from Miss Metals. Mm -hmm. And until I get it, I don't care about nothing Miss Metals is saying. And with Marlo, I... I Marlo has so much trauma. We gonna get to it towards her, 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 her TikTok yes. to this yes. episode. Yes. Marlo got trauma, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my Marlo read and I'm gonna put it at the Over end. to the end. Okay, gotcha. All right, so Kenya is talking on like she has some event coming up, um, and she's like going off on her staff and getting stuff right. We see that. Okay, Kenya more hair care, right? So then she calls Manetta because Manetta is actually a choreographer. So she mm -hmm. wants Juanita to choreograph a routine for her at this big event where she's going to have like a marching band. I guess maybe one of them classic football games or something, mm -hmm. HBCU games. And Kenya wants to come out and promote her business and have like a dance too. Because you know she thinks she's Beyonce. Twirl, twirl. So <laughs> Juanita does agree to that. And um, I guess that's that's cute. <laughs> what do you think about that? That's, that's, we're seeing I wanna, I, we only on episode what, three? I think we're only on three. Yeah. So I'm gonna reserve my Kenya thoughts until yeah. like this because when we get like 20 some episodes of Roa, yeah, we do. Roa's long. Yeah. I, but I'm hoping in in Kenya's storyline, I really want to see her navigating as a single parent. Mm -hmm. Um, I really want to see how she is like. I know she's talked about Mark won alimony and things like that with her divorce. And I want to see how this is affecting her because I know this is draining emotionally and yeah. I want to see what type of skills or what kind of things she's doing. So I want a little bit more for Kenya. I love seeing businesses. So I love seeing this part, but I am hoping to get some more from Kenya's storyline. Yeah. I was just happy they gave her something like by herself. We get to see something because, you know, we see her in ensemble situations a lot. So it was nice to see, you know, she is showing her business and she got something going on. I definitely would like to know more about the situation with the divorce, with her parenting, you know, like I want to see her auntie again, you know, how she been since COVID. <laughs> I kind of want to catch up with her dad. Like, you know, I do want to see more of her life, but I don't know. We know Kenya is currently going through a divorce, right? And we know Mark has put in a whole bunch of different stipulations. So I know he was trying to get it to where she couldn't have her daughter on air. She couldn't have her mm -hmm. daughter. Film. I'm not sure what all Kenya's allowed to show us involving that right now which is unfortunate and disappointing because you know we want to know well Especially even if we can't know tell us we can't know yeah. like you know make make some type of statement about what's going on with your divorce that what you can't show and what you can't can't yeah. show because you can definitely show us some of your single parenting woes because yeah. i don't think kenya has a nanny because she used to always be like i can't leave brooklyn i can't leave brooklyn she I mean, wasn't you, doing I, I, I remember the party, she had one that they had to fly with her for one of their trips. I remember it was a lot of, you know, things, but 
she's also a very hands-on parent. She wants to know. Yeah. So I want to see yeah. like more of that. And then whenever white chocolate enters the scene. So yeah. I would reserve Kenya's little scene filler for, yeah. for later on in the season. See and I'm not a Kenya fan. So the fact that I'm not shading her is good. What? Now, I understand you not being a Kenya fan with Apollo. 20 seasons ago when she stepped on the scene and she was inappropriate with Apollo. Yeah. But after that, like, Kenya had a redemption arc. I, you know what? I, I, like I said, every season, I try to start over with Kenya, right? Because the show is like, they get back together like, hey, we're friends. People are like, what? So I do try to give Kenya like a clean slate. I think the season with Kim Fields, I was over it. I'm I, okay, I get that. She was me. I was like, you done mess with like Kenya. You done picked the wrong one to okay. She was, she really I, didn't like like I didn't like her that I, I didn't really like care it. for her that season. But <laughs> Kenya's I, been on for what like maybe 10 seasons out of 15. Season. Yeah, she's been on a lot of seasons. She's been on I feel like I've liked her more than I hated her. Yeah, no, nah, not me. No, <laughs> it, it's are, you team, are you team Kenya or team Portia? Neither one of them. <laughs> I, <love that>. <laughs> <laughs> I did like Portia because Portia was fun. Um, but lying on candy like that, that I you, you know talking about underground railroad Portia. No, not not I I, I said she was fun. <laughs> I didn't say she was smart. <laughs> Let's be clear. I could go to the club with Portia and twerk and have a good time. We could sing some songs, drink a little bit. Don't but do that because you're going to say you're trying to drug her. You're trying to eat her box. Don't go drinking with Portia. Yeah, don't do that. And I don't, don't, bring do don't bring your man around it. Don't bring your man around it. Don't bring your man. Don't bring your man. Do you have a man? No, I don't. <laughs> okay? Don't let her sniff no type of male scent of yours. Portia's good TV, but I would never put her in my circle. I, I She's one of them. She's good TV. She has great moments moments for TV, yeah. but mm -hmm. no thank you. Yeah, I, I get it. So, I was Nene. I was a Nene fan. I couldn't stand Nene half the time, but Nene was great TV as well. Nene always had those one-liners that I just... Forever and ever. <laughs> Forever I said what I said. And the sad thing is I really enjoyed Phaedra, too. I did. I enjoyed Phaedra. She had... I never liked her. Really? Oh, I she love her. She always gave me fake from day one. She gave me them Christians I couldn't stand in the church. Remember so when we asked her how far along she was yes, and she didn't yes, know. Kate, yes. like, Phaedra's always gave me fake from day one. Day one. I get it. I think I, I think I had sympathy with her with the Apollo thing because I felt like Kenya was like like really foul with messing with Phaedra. I don't really care about Apollo, but the way Kenya like if we're a group of women and we work co-workers, we gotta work together, go on trips together, it should be some type of respect for one another. I that, but that was you. one moment with Kenya being inappropriate with flirting with your husband. Then you forgave Kenya, but didn't forgive Kenya. She been fake. For, for seasons. I want her to keep that same energy. She always had this Southern Belle lion ass mentality. She oh, never yeah. did it for me. I'd rather take Portia because Portia was authentically uh, <laughs> not as smart. You know what I mean? It was authentic. How did they you know what? Portia played the Rainbows. Where was the train? Like she's no, always no. been authentically where I she is. For me, I like Phaedra Shade because I know you, Shady. I know I can't trust you. Versus Portia uh, make you think she authentic and stab you right in your face. Oh, I didn't know I stabbed you. Even then, <laughs> she's authentic with it. You know what I mean? Like that's her personality. Phaedra <laughs> always gave me a Jekyll and like a like a masking with her. Yeah. I never thought we ever got the real Phaedra ever at an autumn season. But the most of that was a divorce. But divorce. even with that, I believed you knew about the scam in Phaedra. Now you can't tell us because you can't go to jail with you. Right. But you be trying to sit here and act like you wasn't talking to Mr. Chocolate. Like you wasn't done. You supposed to hold on to that. You're supposed to, hey, you're supposed to hold on to it. Again, Phaedra had those zingers though. Like we ain't got to get one. We had a read since that read. Ain't nobody had, had one. Y'all be giving her way too much credit. She had one historic read. One. <laughs> one. One. Everything else was like cute moments. But she had one historic. But I, but movie. those other and cute really. moments was cute sound bites. Like I'm saying, they were cute little sound bites. Like Nene would yeah. have. But that historic, 
Like that was a long. When you look at the, when you look at the like the history of Phaedra, everybody goes back to her read with Kenya. The sound bites, sound bites. You go to Nene. Sound bites. Yeah. That's Queen Nene. You know what? I'm a I'm gonna try to do it next week and find sound bites for these people to see. Try it. Find yeah, it. I'm gonna see what Look I can find. Nene definitely has some. Even Candy. Like you know what I'm saying. I said what I said and what you said. What the boom? The boom? Yeah. 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 But, that was quick though. Phage was Candy has the best uh taglines. Yes. Her taglines get back. My roots are in Atlanta, but my branches is worldwide. I take a shade <laughs> tree to a money tree. Like yes. she always had the best taglines too. Yeah. Uh, like I said, they were uh quick, and you know what I mean? You can say it as quick. Phaedra had a serious long moment and we didn't even get bored. Like we stuck with her the whole time. Like that was a long now, check that. <laughs> Now you check know, that. My attention span is not about to sit like, oh my gosh, shut and up. And then did, did, like, did, did, did the look. And then I know the look, the whole thing did, did the <clears throat> and then Nene was like, okay. <laughs> that was back when Raw was epic. You hear yes. me? Girl, I sat and watched that. It was my best friend, right? He hadn't watched it. He never watched Housewives at the time, but he had came to my house to visit me and I was watching the reunion. It was live. So he sat and watched it with me. And after that, he was like, I don't know who the hell she is. Now I'm about to watch this show. <laughs> like, he was like, because we just sat there like, oh, my. She read. It was long, though, y'all. It was a long read. And someone. normally. It goes in the cup. And you don't know if you're going to get. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. <laughs> it was a. We, listen. She was a chef. Yes. And you she guys, did. if you don't ever come back, Phaedra, they can never get over that moment. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of. You I left it. You left. You left your mark for sure. And you know she's on Housewives. Of, um, I mean, Medicine Wise. What is it? Married to Medicine. Uh, married to Medicine. So no medicine. medicine. Not married. She not married, and and not to nobody in medicine. No, she she dating some, I think she's dating a dentist. I could she dated Girl, I, I, I haven't followed Phaedra since that lie. I'm not gonna I'll hold you yeah, down. You know that I'm I'm, it for me. I've read it somewhere that she was dating a physician. That's the only reason I know. So yeah, I, I haven't know. followed her since watch Mary's medicine, so I will catch up when she get on there. Um okay, so back to the story. So Candy is meeting up with Don Juan, she's talking about business. She got Todd's movie last on her list, and she's gonna executive produce it because <laughs> she's not gonna act in and show people to be like saying, "Oh, nepotism." But she got Todd last. <laughs> on her list. She said, "You, you put her as a footnote." <laughs> oh, in Todd movie, but I won't be acting in it because I don't right. want them to say that I'm the lead <laughs> in, the, in the movie. So I be producing. She put him last. I might get him a little bit of money. <laughs> She's not on it at all. Then um, Don Juan talks about the Bravo comment, and Mama Joyce, and he said he does feel Mama Joyce was shady, and he asked her how does she feel about it. Candy says she was annoyed. She said that she left, and she hasn't talked to Mama Joyce since. And he asked her, have you ever, like, talked to her and told her? And she was like, yeah, I do. But she's going to, you know, she don't listen to me. And I don't care what she thinks about Todd, but I need her to respect my marriage. So what did you think about that conversation that Candy had with Don Juan? Coming from someone that had to put boundaries on their mother that you can watch as a YouTube, mm -hmm. that's not enough. You have to be able to say, like you were saying earlier, the next time you say something disrespectful to my husband, I might have to cut that allowance off. Yeah. You you need to bargain something that for real shows your boundaries, and then you need to follow up on that. Yeah, because she probably I mean, that ain't gonna work. She'll do it anyway. She probably like even if you give her that type, just know that Mama Joyce is the type of person that really has to learn. I was talking to one of my friends about this, and I think I talked to you about it. I'm the type of person where I can learn from karma versus learn from myself, right? Mm -hmm. Mama Joyce is going to have to feel it. So when you she try to take it. a boundary yeah. away, she's going to still do it. And you're going to have to take that away so she can feel it. You know what I mean? So maybe, not, so maybe not cut off her paying out her bills or whatever. But maybe her I would. In 10 years of me telling you the same thing about my husband, yeah, I would tell you I'm no longer going to help pay for your lifestyle if you continue to disrespect my marriage. You're not just disrespecting Ty. You're disrespecting me. We yeah. have two children together. You're disrespecting Kayla. Like, I would 
firmly put in the ground because we know Mama Joy's love money. That's why she keep talking about it. Yeah, and that's how you took me the credit card. The reason she don't like Ty, and this is crazy to me, right? Like, as a mother, I don't want to go first and leave my kids here, you know, to fend for themselves. You know, like as far as while they're young. However, once I <laughs> my kids both become adults. I don't want to bury my kids type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I want to go first because, honestly, losing my kids would hurt me so much. <laughs> and I want to be able to experience their life, watch them grow, be great people, watch them have kids, and do all this kind of stuff. I don't want to wish death on my kids before me. Mama Joyce is worried that if Candy die, Todd going to get the money. Why that's are why you? Said, that's the thing. She got a bargain with her because whatever reason, whatever rooted issue, she won't go to therapy for for Mama Joyce. It's rooted in Candy's money. Yeah, it's real, and I really think she feels like she wanted. She wanted to be so right about Ty, and yeah. Miss and Mama Joyce gives me. You want access more to your daughter's money. Right. You are concerned about her money more than her well being because there's nothing. Ty, Ty ain't never been called cheating. Todd ain't never been caught getting yelling in no chick's face. Todd is a great producer. And scene. Acting, no he drugs. He ain't had no not like nothing. nothing. He be letting Candy argue up his He's helped her open these businesses, produce these plays, these shows, these movies to add more money to the bag. Y'all gotta think. Todd was the executive producer of R and B Divas. Who got to L A and to Atlanta? He was also executive producer of the Encore. Like he's still working outside of Candy. He it was his idea to do the old lady game. It was his idea to do the one the couple of plays they done had. His idea to do plays. Now he's trying to do a piece of spot, Italian spot. Like he just trying to franchise and make money. You know, and that's him doing behind the work. Yeah, Candy is in on it and she got the big name, but let's think about who's really doing that footwork. Candy, like Todd understands his role. Yeah. Todd understands that Candy is a face to the business that he understands the fame and things that she goes with and he understands to stand in the back to allow her that marketing and things in that pool and that grab and them 11 million followers yes. on board. but you will see todd at her escape shows yes. you see todd everywhere like he's always still there so until todd gives us a reason leave yes. him the fuck alone yeah, I, Todd is a girl. That's a great husband. That's a surprise. I said, Leo, the only thing you have to worry about with Todd is why you keep letting Kayla struggle. Yeah, <laughs> like I wouldn't know if I wanted to put my money in Todd's hands because I feel like you're gonna let Riley struggle, and we have different parenting styles on Kayla. Like I would have put it all together, like. like if my baby first, they got Blaze and Ace. Are you gonna make them struggle too? Because <laughs> they're your kids, and you feel like not, not on Candy's you know, watch. If it was on Todd's watch, I think he definitely. I, yeah. Would. So, so when oh, you say he likes, like, because the only reason Miley's able to struggle is because Candy doesn't feel like she's able to step in because she's a bonus mom. Because Riley ain't right. struggling, but Kayla is struggling because that's Todd's daughter. You know what and I mean? He's like struggling loosely. Like Kayla ain't obviously eating out of White Castle boxes, but right. the awards that came that that Riley right. gets as far as the house or the apartment that she has and the car that she drives, Kayla's not awarded those same types of right. luxuries. It's, right. it, trust me, if I was Todd's daughter, I'd been cool. But the amount of money he has compared to what Riley gets treated is totally different. Right. And that would be my concern with Todd. Not that he's gonna steal the money, just that he he's not gonna award the kids the same luxury lifestyle that kids want them to right. have. Right. That's it's a, it's a interesting thing too, y'all. Yeah, I don't want y'all to think that we're saying that Todd doesn't love his daughter, or, you know, what want her to have great things. It's his parenting Stop. way. He it's it's the way he, you know, parents. He feels like she needs to have work ethic and earn certain stuff. And I, so I understand where he's coming from, but I also understand where Candace coming from. Like, I mean, I worked this hard. I got it. I want to make my, you know, like, so I, I do. I also, and I, what I wish Ty would get to is, is that we want our kids to be further, not at yeah. the same space. Exactly. If you can get Kayla here, 
then why can't she have those things? Right. I don't understand. It don't I'll never see Kayla on the blogs. It don't look like Kayla be doing shit, but mind her goddamn business. Right. Give that little baby whatever little Rolls Royce exactly. or whatever she got. This goes back to our prom season thing yeah. on Venus that we was wondering if the parents was doing a little much. Yeah. I feel like if your kids deserve that and they're not in a space where they're dependent and they're unable to like give you work ethic, give them those things. Let them enjoy and not lifestyle. And then on that other side of it, a lot of times, and, and this is honestly people trying to count people's pockets, which happens a lot. Everybody trying to, I mean, if y'all ain't paying my bills, why are you worried about what I'm buying and what I look like and what I got and how I got, you know what I mean? Like if you're not contributing to my bills, why is it your business? And that's what it is a lot of times too with like that prom stuff. They doing like the most and all this kind of stuff. But then you're like, well, why don't you use that money for college? Like, you know, versus trying to spend it on all of these things or whatever. But what if they already got college fund? You don't what know if what they don't want to go? I see people be mad at me because I took my kids to Punta Cana in 2021 because it was a sale, bitch. That's what was in COVID, girl. I got listen, yeah, I got a deal of my life. I got all I took a um great grandma and then us, and we went all together on an all-inclusive resort, flights included for five stacks. Everything was included. Five stacks. Now, y'all remember I got a lot of kids. It was five people. For five stacks that included flight, that included the 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 um the car service back and forth, that included the excursions, that I would was that. I would oh, that. everything you all you had to do was bring spending money. Other than that, everything was staying for five stacks. Now, some people argue with me about whether or not your kids is gonna remember it. It didn't matter. What I wanted to produce for my kids is if even if they, if I never have a million dollar lifestyle, I wanted my kids to experience um, a life or an experience outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. I needed them to touch the sands in another country for them to know that they can be there. And so I decided to put that money in there. And and I'm that's why I'm okay with prom season and, and these kids having like these luxury two thousand dollar dresses or this or this or that because it's a balance to it and you want to make sure that your kids are able to experience things and make it a little bit of a tangibility to it i don't even know if tangibility is a word but making it more tangible for them to say i can do that even if we live in this house i know that i can touch the 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 sands and the beaches and dominican republic I needed my kids to have that experience. And so that's why I decided to pay for that because I feel like that can happen. And that's the only thing that I can't really agree with with Todd and some of his parents and sounds with Kayla. But I was telling the people that my goal for my kids and why we travel and why we try to do these experiences is because it allows them the ability to see a culture outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes. Even if we never move, you know that you can move around, you can catch yes. a flight, you can do these different things. And I think that even with prom, when I see that type of shit, I love it because I want black boys and girls to experience luxury. I want you to feel it, touch it, smell it. And if you want to continue this lifestyle, I want you to work. And that's the thing too about um that's my baby. His sister got him. <laughs> you know I'm used to it. You know I'm used to it. Go ahead. You know I'm used to it. <laughs> so yeah, but he, he be beating his big sister up. It's so funny. They got a 10 year difference. He is four. She 14. He be like, <laughs> like you, you tune it out until you hear that one type of cry and okay. then you be like okay hold on y'all real quick you tune it out you tune it out, okay. you tune it out like a uh, fire alarm that be beeping in the background you tune it out until you hear that one type of cry and be like oh yeah. shit hold on y'all got to go check on the baby for real yeah, right he all right he just doing what he do he all right he said what mom doing but so with that situation that you were saying it's just tied you are experiencing because you have gotten with candy and you have the opportunity to be able to grow into so much more than you had because you did have you know nice stuff but since you've gotten with candy it has blossomed so much you have been oh, doors have been opened for you that wasn't open for you 
before you did this marriage, right? So you've benefited. You have definitely helped her grow and the brand has become bigger, but you have benefited from this, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you want your daughter to benefit as well? And those doors be open for her. And those yeah. doors be open for her. Because it blessed you, bless her. That's the only thing I feel when it comes to, you know, Todd being like, uh. Todd but like he give Kayla a $1,000 allowance in New York City, which is yeah. <laughs> like, that's Because he'd be like, well, when I grew up, I ain't had no life. Like, he gives right. me that yeah. vibe. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, when Candy does do this wheel, because I do think it's necessary, yeah. and my candy boy, I do think it's necessary yeah. that she has one. Yeah. I do think she needs to purposely put out how much and what trust, yeah. just because I don't think Ty will mishandle funds, but I just think he'll hold on to them yeah. until they are ready. <laughs> Whatever that is. That is, like I said, that is Mama Joy's biggest issue. Truly, yeah. that is she yeah. count her, her daughter money yeah. and, and candy goes and it's like why in your mind are you thinking candy gonna go before you that's my biggest like that was what i was saying and like, candy don't, don't want to see that about her mama you're just she yeah. always talks about how close she is to her mom but candy always gives praise and reverence and respects to mama joyce she lets mama joyce do whatever and i don't think candy understands your mama yeah. has some deep-rooted issues yeah, like if you can't call you cannot call somebody an opportunist when that is what you are doing you are plotting your child's death like in a sense like so when i said that earlier i'm trying to use no sound bite i do not want to have my kids go first i'm just saying i put in the atmosphere i didn't want to say it like i want to go first and then bam something happened to me you know i was trying to go around it so i can manifest the right thing <laughs> okay absolutely I, and i think i mean if people choose to sound like they gonna do what they want to do and, and that's just what it is but i think we're I think this is coming from a loving place. Like Mama Joyce and Candy need therapy, but until Mama Joyce is open to that because she is an older generation, yeah. Candy needs to set firm boundaries yeah. and she needs to give some repercussions when those boundaries aren't met. And yeah. that, although will be hard, will give her a lot more peace than she understands. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to Drew and Ralph. Um, they had a date, rock climbing, cute. Ralph's gonna pull away from the music because it ain't really he done. That's that was what he was supposed to do. And I guess he's moving on to something else. Drew was a little sorry about that because I guess she felt like that connected them in a sense. Um, I don't care. Do you care? <laughs> you know what? I I like Drew, but I don't feel like she translates well on Housewives yet. Yeah. Like Drew, I like I like Drew's story more than Sonya's, more than Metal's. I I I feel like honestly, I feel like next season gonna be Drew's season. I really do. Now that this divorce is kicking, yeah, the me, divorce is gonna definitely. Make I it. get. I'm gonna put my money on Drew. Don't disappoint me. Drew Sedora's season is next motherfucking season yeah, because she, she she shrinks herself so much for Ralph. And, and he ain't like nobody. I like let's just he be very clear. Drew Sedora, when it came to coming on Housewives, was the reason that they came because we know her. She the one that slept with Derwin. Okay, we know her. We you don't know, know you, Ralph. Well. That's T Boss <laughs> from from <laughs> TLC <laughs> Biopic. We right. know Drew. She, she's somebody, but you, Ralph. We did not know you. Give her, <laughs> give her season. A lot of times we like the women more when they not with their horrible men. <laughs> <laughs> Give Drew next season. I'm putting my finger on Drew. Go on her spot on Rowan next season. Watch okay. what I say. This is okay, so gonna be Drew's real breakout season. I'm gonna go get my baby because he is collaring, he is not on them. I but, know, go ahead. I talk to what's next. And I'm okay, talk, to you is, uh, talk about Ralph and his cousin Courtney. How he just loved his cousin. And then about their I, I'm so sick of black people trying to find a way to cousin. Go ahead. I'm so sick of black people trying to find a cousin way to cousin. Now, all of a sudden, they get on here and they like, this is my cousin and this is my cousin on my grandma. I sat once removed from my sister, brother, because I'm so sick of hearing that. I don't know who this Courtney lady is, and I don't know why uh, they have, you know, Ralph want to cling to Courtney so much. It's, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know how to say it, but it's a little weird for me that him and Courtney, like he's embraced Courtney so much. I can't put my finger on it yet, but it's a little weird. I know also in this scene that we found out that her baby daddy is from Groove Theory, which we love that group of you from the 90s. 
And what really killed me about that scene is when she introduced, they come through the door, you know, uh, Drew is embracing as Drew does this new Courtney, uh, cousin Courtney. They come through the door and they're like, you know, this is, you know, such and such. And this is my baby dad. We found out that, you know, Drew and um, Bryson have had a movie together that we probably never saw because I didn't know what it was when they seen it. But that's wonderful. And then they go into, you know, them having this co-parenting relationship with their child that's 24. That translated to me that we sleep around allegedly a lot. Because what are you co-parenting that you bringing him to this house? That's weird to me. I, I I don't I don't I don't I don't understand that that thought process. But if she like it, we love it. But I think her and Bryson might still sleep around a couple of times too. Because what do you mean we co-parent at twenty? Your baby is grown. And then she said they were friends, which is cool. But the, they they operate still like there's a there's a connection that's beyond the kid. Why did you bring him? Like, if you're there to meet your cousin and Drew, why was he even there? So I'm not really sure. I don't like Courtney right now. I don't. It's only episode three or four. I don't know what episode we in right now, but we're early in the season. But right now, I'm not a fan of Courtney. I just, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know why she brought that man and why she had to tell us. She gives me clout chasing. Just a tad, just a little bit. I think she wants to prove that she's somebody. Um, just with her trivial beef with Candy and then her telling us about Bryson, Courtney just gives me, I want to be somebody, somebody vibes. And that's why she told us who her baby daddy was, because I don't understand why he was there. But maybe y'all could tell me in, in the comments below after you replay this, do you bring your baby, if you and your baby daddy are no longer in a relationship and your child is grown, do you bring your baby daddy to meet another family member or couple? Hell no. <laughs> no. Why? why was he there? Candy, why was he there? Why was he there? Y'all fucking? Why is he there? Oh my God. <gasps> was he there? It, it's giving real we still fuck. Because why is he there? Why did we need to know that? What is Courtney trying to tell us that you somebody like Candy is? Why why do you have your baby daddy there to meet a family member? Okay, so this isn't him with her, but that's him when he was with ah, you <laughs> I don't know who that girl was. But that's Candy, you couldn't find no picture of Courtney. <laughs> I couldn't find one. But that's him when he was with Groove Theory and he was like super fine. <laughs> but his name is Bryce, y'all. Groove Theory. I know Groove Theory, right? He was in that group. I wonder if that was just to give her some type of clout. You know, That's exactly what I said. I said Courtney yeah. exudes clout. Like she exudes, I want y'all to know on Roa that I'm somebody. So let me show you my baby daddy. Because ain't no way in hell I'm taking my baby daddy and my kids is grown to meet a family member. For fucking what? We're not together. Period. How are you co-parenting a 24-year-old? Yeah. Weird. And I had pictures, y'all. I forgot to show y'all pictures. That was Marlo. Um, no, yeah. that's not the end, though. Okay. That's okay. Okay. That end. Okay. We play those when we get to Drew's ooh-la-la. -la. But look, here's... um. Why I got her up there? Okay, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> so, Drew gets a call from um, Candace Dillard from um, Potomac Wives. And she um wants her to, she's coming to do a show in Atlanta or something, and she invites Drew to come on stage and sing a song with her. So Drew's super excited. I'm like, ah, do it for her. So she's happy. So um when Courtney comes to the house, right, to hang out with her cousin and his uh, his family, um uh, Drew tells her, like, yeah, I'm going to be singing with Candy. She's like, oh, my gosh, that's great. Yeah, I got to call Candy so I can invite her. So she calls Candy. Now, y'all know last episode, Candy and Courtney was fighting. And Drew is about to call Candy to talk to her on FaceTime while Courtney's there. So Courtney does what is smart. She's like, let me go hop with the husbands. And she leaves so Drew can call Candy, right? So then Drew calls Candy, and then Drew is like, hey, Candy, I want to invite you. I got um Courtney here with me. And it's like, Drew, at first, at first. I was like, oh, damn, do I know? 
you ain't know it happened. Like, that's why she's doing that. And then, like, my brain kicked in. And I remember when Ralph was telling Drew about the party. And he said, I met my cousin Courtney or whatever. And she said, oh, okay. He also said that Candy got into it with somebody that was going. And she said, who? He was like, my cousin. She did know. So why would you think? See, don't try, oh, see, this is Drew being an actress. This, this is when you mess with Melanie's man, okay? And you made the game trash for a while because Derwin cheated on Melanie. You know, you're acting like you don't know, but you really did know. Drew, let me know her acting right there. I was like, oh, she gonna really try to play us like she ain't know. <laughs> when she called Candy and Courtney walked away, the fact that Drew went back to talk to Candy so she could see Courtney was there was Drew being messy. So y'all, I'm telling y'all for the rest of the season, y'all can't tell me Drew ain't messy because I done peeped her. She was not a good actress and they played back, but Ralph actually told her. <laughs> so I'm gonna be like, ah, oh, nah. If y'all be like, no, nah, I like Drew, she ain't Drew good. gives me real produced. Like, you know what I mean? Like she gives me, sometimes she has moments for the producer. Like yeah. I'm gonna make sure I call Candy while Courtney's there. It was giving real produced scene. Cause bitch, you knew. You and knew. Then she, when she tried it, she was like, "Oh, I wasn't there. I didn't know. I didn't know." You knew. And Candy, when you look, watching these reviews, because you do watch reviews or whatever, or you speak on it, peep that Drew did know that <laughs> she was being messy. So I want authentic, you know, reactions now. Okay, y'all can't be playing with me because I'm I'm tuned in now. Probably done got me tuned back in. <laughs> and I love I love that the producer, especially um. I think Eric is the producer for Roa and Potomac. I love the editing for the past two, three seasons of each Potomac and Roa, where they doing this rewind back in real time. Yeah. This editing is top yeah. tier. They give us like the stuff. So we not like that didn't happen. That did happen. Y'all like play. Cause the, a lot of times y'all wouldn't let us know if they really knew they didn't know. But now that you can show us like playbacks, like, no, we can't. I love that. that. I do too. Cause now I love the, I'm going to catch you in this line real time. <laughs> and I love it. You like it, I love it. I love that for us. Because we ain't crazy. We be like, now nah, I know I saw. <laughs> right. And I love that they are putting that in because you be a whole lot. She because tried people she like tried. people like Giselle try to play us so much on these shows. So y'all gotta give us that. Cause y'all ain't making y'all see when your producers don't show us, they gaslighting us. They are, because y'all know what happened, because you was there for 15 hours while you yes. said that we ain't tripping. Yes. So, yeah, you know, she said that to, to, to Candy, and Candy let her know, you know, I don't deal with her. Oh, I did not. Okay, whatever, girl. That's what Candy said. That's fine, bitch. I'll be there. Right. Whatever. Okay. I'll be there. Yeah, so I definitely was like, I wanted to call it out, because that was, mm, mm. When we get to the reunion, I don't want y'all to play, because we're going to go back to this podcast, this live stream. We gonna say no. We caught that. Don't do that. He caught that. Stop playing with us. So Courtney blames um Sonya for um the whole fight with Candy in the first place because she was like, um, was she the one that I told her that we had this issue and she said, well, you should talk to her. So I went to talk to her, but that would have been true, Courtney, if you would have gave Candy a, a, a different energy. The reason that Candy reacted the way she did was because you came with negative energy. Your hands was moving, shoulders popping, neck swinging, and, <laughs> and that, made Candy, that made Candy's defensive go up. So, it, yo, so it, I don't think it's Sonya's fault that you went to talk to her. She said, well, if y'all got like a thing, you should just talk to her. So I don't think that you can really throw it on that. But you know, Drew don't like Sonya. So Drew was like, yeah, you got to watch her because she's messy. No, girl, you messy, Drew. <laughs> you messy. Don't do it. Now, I don't know. Um, I think there was some truth. I think Sonya messy okay. and Drew messy. Okay. So Sonya <laughs> is a wishy-washy machine. And that was not a lie. She is do think, floppy. Do you think that Sonya's intent when she told Courtney what well, you should talk to Candy was her being messy? I think that Sonya does bare minimum to be on the losing team, which is Sheree and Marlo. Okay. Well, she's there. Well, well, we'll see if you last, Sonya. I don't, I don't know. Okay, so what's next? The event, the actual event. Candy, Monietta, and Sonya. Can you? Oh yeah, my picture. I can use my picture. <laughs> they at the table. They look nice. I was happy to find a picture, <laughs> so they look nice. Um, and then, um, Marlo comes and Courtney comes. And you could, Candy don't see it for Marlo or Courtney. She don't like them. 
um, Courtney's like, hey, hi, 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 when she say hi, and it's like, Candy's kind of like me in a sense where I can't, I can't fake the fuck if I don't like somebody. I, I can't fake that. If I don't like somebody, I can't be like, hey, girl, that's why I can't be on reality TV. You can't put me in a situation with somebody I do not like and think I'm going to be like, oh, my God, hi, you're cute. I'm not. I'm gonna look at you like <laughs> like Candy did. <laughs> but that's real life. Like I don't. I was not expecting Candy or anyone in any scene to act like they like somebody. You're at an event for someone else, and when people come to an event that you don't like, you don't speak to them. Mm-hmm. So I, I, that's why I feel like reality TV need to stop with that. Maybe they should give us like a season where if the girls really ain't rocking with each other, and I want to film with each other. We see what that looks like. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause that's my reality. You, have you know what? Well, we gonna get to that that reality right there when we get to love and marriage Chunks deal. Cause that's okay. the problem with them. So we gonna get to that. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh Candace performs and then she invites Drew on stage. Drew performed for like 30 seconds and then she go off and everybody like that's it. Like you invited us out here for that. And it really wasn't like a song they had together. It honestly sounded like it was like, let's ad lib, you know, on a track or whatever. Like, I do a woo, you do a woo, I do a ah, you do a ah. Like, <laughs> it wasn't like a real song. And it was quick. But they asked at the um, after party or whatever, they asked, um, they asked Drew, like, that was quick, what's up? And she said, well, it was her show. Well, you know, she's invited me to do a little bit because it's her show. So, and they accepted that. So, Great. I wish you guys it before I thought out. I just thought that Drew Drew has a single. I really wanted Drew to like sing her single or maybe do an opening act or a mesh where they sung Candace's song. Maybe yeah. she sung the first verse and Drew sung the second or whatever. I think it was a little bit of a mismarked opportunity that could have been better thought out that could have highlighted both Drew and Candace. But I do know they have a single together coming out. But I, I hope the single isn't the oohs and ahs. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. I actually like Candace Dillard's music, so I think I think um, I think it's gonna work well. But I, I do wish in that moment, even if they would have previewed the single or yeah. something, I just think that it could have been a little better than yeah. a couple of oohs and ahs because you like, could actually sing. It was kind of like they didn't even discuss it. Like it, it doesn't seem like it had any effort. Jess, I'm gonna get out. Yeah, I don't understand. I thought I don't know. Maybe we'll see it on Potomac, but you know, Candace has done really well with rolling out singles and and music videos right after the show. I I, I don't know, but maybe we're in in it for a long haul. Maybe we'll see Candace again, or maybe it'll show up on uh, RHLP. But this would have been a good time to drop the single that y'all have together and y'all could have sung it on the show and then drop it for iTunes. But I don't want to get in their business. We did some. <laughs> So we, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers said they did some uh uh um what they call it uh sister act two la 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 she did some la la la, la, la. yes it works for her yes that's that was it that was it okay so at their little after gathering situation um Sonya hashes it out with Drew about BravoCon like I ain't like the way you did I thought it was cool. And then they decide they're going to be cool. Wait, so. can we talk about the merch for a second? Go ahead. I have never seen. Drew misses the mark every time. Why the hell would you put a read that was done on you on a goddamn shirt? I was invited and uninvited. No, we put who going to check me, boo. We put I turn a, a shade tree into a money tree. Why would you Why would you mass produce an embarrassing moment on a T-shirt? You was red. You supposed to put the read on the shirt. Not you got red for mass people to walk around and remind you that you were uninvited. Why would Sonya have a problem with that? Girl, I told you that. <laughs> Maybe she felt like she was trying to turn the negative into positive. <laughs> and make no, money herself, get ahead of the joke and joke on herself and make money off of it. Maybe. No, ma'am. You <laughs> haven't had an iconic green yet. You don't need no merch yet. We haven't had that from you for you to capitalize yeah. yet. You know what? I do need to, I need to look into that. I need to look into these shirts. I need to get me a, a blue shirt. I need to get me who going to check me, boo. And now check that. 
<laughs> like you haven't had a read that has been picked up by Black Twitter to yeah. put anything on a merch yet. That's yeah. not where we are right now, Drew. Just hold back. I know you're trying to capitalize more than Sheree, and we appreciate that. Yeah. But this is not the T-shirt yet to do it all. Yeah. This ain't this. You know what? I really liked her tagline. Like you know, I went from the gaslight to the spotlight. Yeah. You probably could have put that on there, yeah. but this uninvited to be invited to uninvite, that was dumb. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. I don't know who your people are, but that was a no-no for me. Yeah. But okay, so, so they made up. They're going to be fine. Candy confronts Courtney about the ghetto hood conversation. Courtney says, okay, yeah, I did say it, but I'm from the hood. I'm hood. I'm hood. It was good. Now, with that Stacey Dash from Clueless <laughs> Ass Voice, it wasn't given believable. Yeah, I was over them too. I, I don't care about those fights. Um, you see, these are beefs I'm going down. Manetta says Marlo was disrespectful in Jamaica. Okay, Marlo doesn't care. <laughs> and I don't either, Manetta, respectfully. I don't either. Marlo is who she is. We don't yeah. care. And Drew mentions uh, Candy's restaurant. Candy says, you know, like, uh, I, you know, basically, first she tried to say, what? What are you talking about? Like, she, no. And then she's like, oh, I'm not talking about that. I can't talk about that. Marlo gets an attitude um, that Candy brushes it off and, you know, the shooting, the shooting. So why, how come you get to not say nothing? Okay, well, I'm leaving it. She can't talk. And Marlo, well, you want to say something? Let's talk. Well, Candy says to Marlo, if you want to say something, let's talk about, you know, when you cut that lady's face or something. And Marlo was like, okay, and I sleep with white men and I got a mugshot. And, you know what I mean? Like, okay, that's old stuff. We talk about that. We never talk about your stuff. So, girl, I... I don't know what happens. Um, <laughs> Drew says we're going to defuse it. So then it's like they, they rap or something, but you know, the camera still be rolling. And Drew and Marlo are still talking. And Marlo's mad at Drew because Drew didn't say shooting. She said incident. And like it gave Candy an excuse to kind of brush it off. And Marlo was mad because Marlo had a nephew that uh, worked for Candy's restaurant. And he is not longer here i guess he had got caught in the shooting as well this has nothing to do with candy's restaurant though but he has worked for her restaurant and marlo was mad yeah. <laughs> wait i'm getting lost marlo was mad because okay she texts candy i guess when her nephew died and said you know my nephew got shot or something and she's like oh dang your nephew said yeah he works for you you know at the i think at old lady game and Candy was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but he don't work there no more or something like that. And I guess Marlo didn't like Candy's response. So that triggered her when the other person got shot. And I don't know. I broke it down the way they said it. Because Marlo got really mad, y'all. Like, really, really mad. Drew was like, what is happening? I, I don't know who did what. I'm going to sum Marlo up in about two minutes. Okay. Give it to me because I was lost, girl. I was, I'm was i just sitting my mind. So <laughs> Marlo's another one that needs therapy because what I have noticed with Marlo as a friend of the show and now really is transparent as a housewife yes. is her being orphan Annie for so many years um, and being in the foster care system and things like that. I feel like a lot of things that she does is below the belt because it's a survival instinct. Yeah. Like how she had to slit this lady face and she claimed on her live it was in self-defense. I don't know. We're going to go with that. Yeah. Um, and then that girl unalived herself. And I think that's why she responds to like Kenya, other people below the belt. She gets yeah. very upset. I feel like she's going to hell. She goes to hell and she goes to hell for no reason. Yeah. And if you ever notice about Marlo, Marlo is very specific on labels and tangible items and monetary things. I think what Marlo's real deep rooted issue is, is what Candy and Kenya is that she wants to be accepted and validated because she's never had it in her childhood. Your mama didn't want you while you was talking about Kenya. Your mama was on drugs. Your mom, you projected that to Kenya because that was your reality as well. You've been in foster care systems. All these different traumatic events happen to you, right? And this is why, as your response, you feel like you have to wear all these Gucci's and have a consignment hand-me-down uh, store of labels because you want to feel accepted. And when you wanted Candy and Kenya to accept you and you felt rejection, this is your response. Mm. This has shit to do with OLG game. This is more or less 
you wanting to be accepted and still have not found that. This is why you couldn't accept your nephews because your mother never taught you how to be a mother and this was your rejection. You need therapy, not a life coach, a licensed clinician for you to unpack Mowgli, the things that you went through when you were raised by bears in the wilderness. Well, okay okay <laughs> this is why when you go on jason lee's interview you sitting up here talking about candy with jason's salty ass for about 45 minutes when the interview should be on you this is why you going live when we should be promoting what you got going on in that damn uh consignment shop you got but you up here explaining why you cussed out drew about a a, a, a non-related trauma with your nephew you cannot stand you are not in a validation acceptance space that you want to be in because all your life you had to fight tv and my thing is i want you to go to therapy because your beef with not candy not and not your beef with motherfucking candy is not real Ooh. it's projection that's why you with low vibrational holes like Sheree right now because y'all have not gotten the self-esteem and validation within yourself that you need and it's projecting Mm. And that's why you cussed out Drew for no reason. Until Marlo reaches that particular peak that I know that she can, Marlo really could have stayed a friend of the show. We never needed you as a housewife until you could step into or work actually on your true potential. And right now you're begging to be an it girl because you don't think you're an it girl because you haven't had to be the it girl all your goddamn life. Mm. And until you put that together, you'll never parent effectively. You'll never cultivate real relationships. And you'll still be sitting here yelling at Drew for no goddamn reason about your nephew's death. Get your shit together, Marlo, so that we can see the amazing Marlo God made you to be instead of this low vibrational, hip below the bell, talk about Candy, Sheree, and other successful Black women that you dream to be but are upset that you are not there yet. Until that happens, I have nothing for Marlo. She is irritating and unbearable until she gets to that level. Amen. That's my prayer. I told you I'm Christian, but I cuss a little. That was a prayer. That was a prayer. Because she's going to get there eventually. Amen. Next show. The next show. <laughs>